Hi everyone. Today we will be discussing about the guidelines issued by the center for the import of exotic species. By this, the pet trade will be controlled. This guidelines has been issued by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change uh, on the background of this outbreak of coronavirus because this has uh, raised a global concern about the illegal wildlife trade and zoonotic disease because uh, it is said that this coronavirus has been initiated from the wet market of Wuhan where a lot of uh, animals are traded okay so because of that uh, this step has been taken by the ministry of environment and forest and climate change uh, before getting to the detail let us see what is an exotic live species is it is said that exotic species are animals that are named under the appendix of one appendix one two and three of the cites cites you may be knowing this is a convention uh, the expansion of cites in convention of international trade in endangered species of wild flora flora and fauna so it has three appendices appendices 1 2 and 3 uh, in appendices 1 animals are included of which no trade happens so uh, the animals which is included in this appendices 1 that trade is banned and uh, animals which is included in the appendix 2 uh, their trade can happen with the prior permission and in appendix 3 there is no limitation for the trade of this animals and birds okay uh, when if any country is uh, saying or uh, raising any objection to the trade of a particular animal which is listed in appendix 3 then that particular species trade can be banned so these are the three appendices in of the cites it is appendix 1 2 and 3 so it is said that exotic species or animals are an animals which is named under any of these three appendices that is appendix 1 2 and 3 and also it should not include uh, in the schedule of the wildlife protection act 1972 so in our india we are mainly focusing on uh, this act that is wildlife protection act of 1972 uh, actually the wildlife if we are committing any crime on any animal uh, if that is comes under the wildlife we are identifying whether it is wildlife or not based on this definition so any animals which is uh, in the list of wildlife protection act of 1972 it has so many schedules like uh, schedule 1 2 3 4 5 etc uh, you might have studied that schedule 5 have some animals which are vermins okay so uh, likewise they have schedules if an animal is named in that schedule they are considered as wildlife okay or a wild wild animal so if uh, that particular animal's name is not included in this wildlife protection of uh, protection act of 1972 and is included in this appendices of the cites then that species can be said as an exotic live species okay so be clear what is an exotic species is if an animal's name is included in the appendices of cites and is not included in the schedules of wildlife protection act 1972 so then it is termed as exotic species simply we can say that when a species is imported from an, another country to india and that's name is not in the wildlife protection act of 1972 then changes made by this guidelines are all imports will be screened from now on so the now uh, uh, the imports are being made through the director general of foreign trade so um, state forest department does not have any role in this uh, screening of imports okay so usually what happens is this is uh, done by the customs okay so they will be usually checking uh, on this wildlife uh, not wildlife this exotic species from where they are coming and also they will be issuing certificates for this animals from now onwards uh, these no objection certificate will be from the wildlife warden of the state okay so if a person is uh, uh, person is importing a particular species from another country they will have to obtain an objection no objection noc from the chief wildlife warden of the state so here comes the role of the state forest department and also uh, one more thing is that uh, that is uh, for those who are keeping the species with 
them now that is for the existing species they sh they have to declare um, or uh, themselves they have to uh, make a declaration uh, before 1st january oh, sorry as of 1st january 2020 to the chief wildlife warden uh, of the concerned state or ut so if i am having a pet in with me that is exotic species i have to uh, inform the chief wildlife warden that i am having particular species and i have to get a declaration okay so that is also self declaration is i have to declare that i have uh, some species and i have get registration for that particular species okay and also if that particular species having any progeny and also registration of that progeny is also must be done within 30 days okay that is also from chief wildlife warden of the concerned state or union territory and also uh, those intending to import must get health certificate from the national health agency of the country of origin from where they are importing that particular species from that country they have to get a health certificate of the species okay uh, indicating that they are free from any disease and also carry health card for that exotic species while importing so all this point has to be uh, done when a pet or an exotic species is imported from another country so all these things will be uh, monitored by the forest department of that particular state earlier this was done by the customs department where they does not have any role related to this after uh, care of this pet animals whether they are disposed to Mm, uh, taken care of properly or they are disposed into the wild or not they will not be uh, taken care of because all these uh, matters are dealt by the forest department so now the things are more better like uh, they will be directly taken care of by the forest department so the advantage of this thing is that sometime exotic species may turn into an invasive species and may cause possible ecological imbalances if they are in released into the wild people will import so many kind of uh, species of animals and birds and plants um, to our country just out of curiosity so when uh, they are getting they are having more and more progenies when the number increases they will not be having enough facility if they are not having enough facility to accommodate the progeny also they will simply open uh, or just leave them into the wild so what happens is that they will go into the wild and become an invasive species these are possibilities okay so they may become an invasive species causing the destruction of ecological imbalance so this may cause a lot of problem for the forest department because they will be the people who are dealing with this thing okay so the first uh, time uh, uh, this has been put under the control of this forest department and this is the first time that the site is appendix listed animals will be examined by the state forest department usually what happens is even the forest department are uh, uh, capturing some kind of this uh, exotic species while they are uh, they are checking uh, and uh, if they are finding that this is not a Uh, not included in the wildlife protection act 1972 they will not be able to take any action against them whether it is illegal or legal because uh, this is not under their uh, purview okay so what happens is whenever they are uh, examining any pet shop or something like that they are finding some exot- exotic species they are helpless because they can't do any actions as this is not under the wildlife protection act of 1972 so this the, this is the first time that cites appendix listed animals will be examined by the forest department and also uh, uh, from now onwards they will be having the forest people will be having or forest officers will be having a control over the pet shops if they are having any exotic species these forest official will have the uh, authority to check and monitor these pet shops okay so this is the first shift Uh, in controlling the illegal pet trade and also if we are checking the most common exotic species which are imported to india or uh, most uh, wanted species are ball python scarlet macaw then sea turtles sugar glider marmoset then grey african parrots grey african parrots are very common uh, in uh, importing uh, common among the imported species okay so these are the some of the most sought exotic species so from now onwards uh, forest authorities will be having more power in dealing with the um, import of exotic species so that they can take care of their 
forest not bare forest our forest with a better control over this exotic and also invasive species okay so that's all thank you